All right, we have found down here is a uniface. Uh, those are is a tool that they use for like stone, uh, woodworking and for uh, cutting uh, meat off of bones and for uh, working on leather and stuff like that. Uh, you can look here and you can see here where they did some work on it on the one side and nothing on the other. Along with here, they did nothing on the one side, on some on the side, and then nothing on the other side. Which in the case of the interface, it was a biface. You'd have working on this side and this side on the same edge. Uh, there are some indications when you run your finger along the edge, if you put it under a micro, uh, magnifying glass, you can see some chip marks taken out of it, indicating that it was, that it was used for scraping. So here's a piece of green obsidian. It's a piece of a biface that was just discovered by these two guys down here. And I was curious about it because green obsidian is pretty unusual and it made me think about how we had found another piece a little while ago that was made out of green obsidian. So we got it out and I wanted to compare the two. And, and when you put them close together, they actually match and make a larger fragment of the blade portion. Now, if we keep looking, we may get lucky enough to actually find the entire piece and reconstruct the point as it looked. So this is one of the benefits of excavating a larger area like this. You can find the pieces where maybe they're resharpening it and they break it, and you get frustrated and throw part of it across the site, and then eventually you might dig it all up and put it all back together. What we just found here is a really large piece of an ungulate long bone. An ungulate is a hooved animal, like a deer or a goat or something similar to that. Now, what's really special about this, first of all, is that we don't find many pieces of long bone like this at the site. And this one's really neat because the center is hollowed out, um, which could suggest that they process the marrow to eat it. Well, it's a tip fragment from a very large biface. So this is probably just a smaller percentage of the whole. So I can only guess how big it was, but it would have been really large. This is uh, one of the larger pieces of charcoal we found. It trumps the piece we found two weeks ago. Uh, it's important for radiocarbon dates. Uh, we protect it in this tin foil by a plastic bag or a paper bag to ensure um, it stays together. And we don't use a plastic bag because otherwise it would be contaminated by the synthetic oils that are found in the plastic bag. This is a fragment of a bifacial projectile point that was just taken out of the ground. Um, we feel at this point that it's the base of the projectile point um, because of this platform here is where they would have been driving flakes off of and you rarely see that on the tip of a projectile point. Um, so this change in angle right here coming from you know rather straight to curving inward and also over here indicates that it could have been hafted onto a spear right at that point. Okay, so right now we're taking sediment samples from the sediment where the projectile point base was found. So we take our sediment samples from at least two of the cardinal directions. So we're gonna take today from the north and from the east, and then we put them in their own separate bags. Oh, and also from the bottom. So two cardinal directions and also from the bottom. Okay, there we go. On the bag we just write that this sample was taken from the bottom and then it goes with RN16395, which is the reading number assigned to this particular artifact.